In this video, we are going to learn about the AI coding agent JetBrains Juni. Juni from JetBrains is a AI coding agent that can be integrated right into your JetBrains IDE and it can help you write code and it can help you become a more productive developer. Juni is not yet another chatbot or a coding AI assistant, but it's a fully fledged AI agent that is integrated into your IDE that can help with your coding activities like writing code, reviewing code, creating documentation, creating tests and also running those tests for you. So let's go ahead and see Juni in action. All right, so I open my IntelliJ IDE and I'm under the plugin section. To install Juni, you need to, under the marketplace tab, you need to search for JetBrains Juni and you can see the search result. So I already installed Juni on my machine, on my IDE. So you need to click on the install tab here. So if the plugin is not installed you will see the install button here instead of the disable button so make sure to click uh, make sure to install the plugin and you may need to restart your id once this is done we can go ahead to the projects tab and in here i can create a new project and uh, here you can either go with an empty project or you can create a bootstrapped version of the project for example i'm using intellij ultimate so i have the spring boot um, plugin where I can directly create a Spring Boot project from my IDE. Uh, you can either go to the start.spring.io website and create a new starter project and start working on it. Or you can completely go with a empty project and then start working on that project. So for now, we will just go with an empty project and I'm going to name this project as Juni Coding Demo. And I'm going to click on create. So this created an empty project for me. So as you can see, there is nothing inside the project apart from the IntelliJ related files. To the right side of the IDE, you can see the uh, icon Juni. We can see a text area where you can ask your questions. And there is also a warning showing that uh, the theme I'm using right now, Gradianto, is not supported, may not be supported with Juni, but uh, I never faced any issues working with Juni. So I think we can leave it like that. Uh, so I can also see that the SDK is not configured. So I'm just going to click on setup and then make sure that I use the latest Java 24 version and i'm going to click on apply and okay so now you can see that uh, here we have a, a text area where you can type in the task you want to uh, you want to delegate to juni and uh, there are some certain examples that you can refer to uh, how you can structure your uh, prompt so i came up with this very simple prompt to create a restful web service for today application and uh, the users can create the users can create read update and delete two items using api endpoints the backend should be built using Java Spring Boot H2 database. And I'm also instructing to use Open API 3 to document the REST API. Just below the text area, you can uh, you have the options of uh, to code and uh, to ask. So here I want Juni to co to create code for me. So I'm just going to click on the option code. If I want to ask any questions regarding the code, uh, I'm just going to I can just click on the I can just click on the option ask. Here we also have something called as Brave Mode that will allow Juni to automatically execute terminal commands without the confirmation from the user. And uh, finally we have the, of course, the you know, submit button, the send button where we can send our instructions to Juni. And you can see that it is first analyzing the requirements and doing a uh, planning. So this is the plan that uh, Juni came up with. So it's first initializing a Spring Boot project with necessary dependencies. You can see the progress icon that is going, uh, that is displayed here. And to the right side, you can see the detailed plan. So the detailed uh, instructions that is being followed by Juni. So it first uh, understands, first trying to understand the project structure by running the terminal command ls minus la. And then it created automatically a pom.xml file with a uh, with a basic, uh, the basic configuration it needed for a Spring Boot project. And then you can see that it also created a to do application dot Java class, which is a main class of a Spring Boot application. And it is continuing to you know, uh, generate all the required classes and files required. So if you again have a look at the plan, it's trying to configure Spring Web, Spring Data JPA, a H2 database, Spring Doc Open API dependencies, which is good because this is what exactly I asked uh, Juni to do. And then it's creating a standard Spring Boot project structure, the main application class, creating the data model for the to-do items, 
and then the repository interface followed by the service layer. So you can see that it came up with a very detailed set of plans and it's executing one by one. Uh, to the bottom right side corner, you can see that uh, the Maven project is already configured. So I can click on the load Maven project button to resolve the dependencies, autom dependencies automatically. So let's go ahead and uh, look around the code uh, Juni has generated. It's not yet completed uh, generating all the code yet. So I'm just going to open pom.xml and here you can see that it is using a Spring Boot Starter parent version 3.1.5. So as of now, the latest version is 3.4.5. So it is still not using the latest version of Spring Boot, but it's still using Spring Boot 3. That is good. It is using the Java version 17, which is already a bit outdated. Uh, it's uh, uh, using the Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency, Starter Data JPA, a H2 database. It's using the validation Spring Boot Starter Validation Dependency for uh, input validation. It's using the open API starter for you no know, for the uh, open API documentation, the testing dependencies followed by the Spring Boot Maven plugin. Looks good until now. So the pom.xml looks good. I will come back once Juni completed its task and then we are ready to run our application. All right, so Juni is done with the task which we have provided. So you can see that it uh, has listed all the files that it created. If you hover over the files, you can see that the number of uh, files, that number of lines of code that are added. You can directly open this file in the editor by clicking on this button. And you also have the option to add all of these files to Git. I'm just going to click on this button. And here you have the possibility to roll back these changes. If you realize that you messed up with the prompt, you can just click on the rollback and then your project will be taken back to the previous state before starting this task. So now let's go ahead and check the code that Juni has provided to us. So I'm just going to open the source main Java folder. And here we have first the to do controller and other control package. So we have the normal rest controller with a request mapping as API slash to do's. And it is using a required logs constructor. So it's using Lombok to do the constructor injection. Here we have a one endpoint to get all to do items and one endpoint to get to do item by ID, another endpoint to create a to do item, update to do item, delete to do item, and then a toggle to, and then maybe like a patch mapping to toggle to do item as a complete. So the code in the controller looks good. So let's go ahead to the to do service. And here we have the corresponding uh, methods that are called by the controller to get all the to do items get to do item by ID. Uh, we also have the functionality to search to do items. So you can see that there are all the corresponding we saw before. So let's go to the to do repository. And here you can see that it is using the Spring Data JPA repository. The repository annotation is actually not needed. Uh, so it also added comments and then using the Spring Data JPA methods to query for the completed to do's and also the uh, get the to do by title. Okay, this is also looks good. If you go to the model itself in the to do item, you can see that it is using data annotation together with uh, the Spring Data JPA entity. So this is not so good. And apart from that, there is uh, nothing specific to point out. Everything looks good. We went through almost all the so we went through almost all the files. The one that is still remaining is inside the folder. So it came up with, uh, so it created a class that's automatically loading all the items during the startup and saving it to this database. Okay, that's good. But the one bad thing is it's using system.out.println for the logging. If I open the resources folder, not the application.properties file. So here we have the server configuration followed by the H2 database configuration and also the JPA configuration and uh, the configuration for open API following followed by the logging configuration. So looks good, but there are some improvements that needs to be done for the code. But you can already see that if uh, you want to create this to do application, it can take anywhere between you no know, 20 to it can take anywhere between maybe half an hour for you to uh, to create this sample application. If it is a more complex application, it may take uh, a few hours for you to create this application. 
but with the help of Juni, you can create the, the create this uh, whole application in the matter of minutes. So if it is a more complex application, for example, maybe an e-commerce application or a blog, it may take you maybe 15 to 20 minutes to come up with a initial working version of the application. So that serves as a huge time saver and increases your productivity as a developer to ship futures faster. And it also created a readme file which uh, lists out uh, in detail about the project. Uh, it's outlining the futures that is and uh, that's futures inside this project, the technologies used, how to get started, the API documentation, how to access the H2 database console and also the sample request body we can use. So everything looks good. So let's go ahead and start the application. I'm going to click on the debug. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure to enable annotation processing. Uh, looks like there is an error. Uh, I know this because I'm using Java 24 and uh, we are using an older version of uh, Spring Boot Starter Parent here. So the newer version as of uh, creating this video is 3.4.5. So I'm going to select 3.4.5 and I'm going to change the Java version to Java 24. And I'm also going to update the necessary dependencies to the latest version. So for the Spring Doc, Open API Starter, WebMVC UI, I'm going to update this to the latest version 2.8.8, right? And I'm going to click on the Maven icon to the top right side corner to synchronize the, the Maven changes. So that should hopefully fix the issue. I'm going to click on the debug icon and debug button right now. Okay, looks good. And you can see that the application has already started successfully. And you can also see the logs that the sample data is already loaded successfully. That's good. And um, let's open the browser. And I'm going to go to the URL localhost 8080 swagger UI index.html. And here you can see the API documentation of the 2D application. So here we have all the required uh, uh, HTTP endpoints. So the first one is to create a new to do item, update to do item, to mark a to do item as complete, to get all the to do items and finally to delete a to do item. So if I check the to do item schema, you can see also the all required fields that are uh, that are accepted by the API. So now let's go ahead and create a to do item. So I'm going to make use of the API documentation and uh, this is the sample schema of the request. I'm going to click on the try it out section button and here I'm going to remove the ID because I'm creating a new to do. I don't need to provide an ID here. This will be auto generated by the backend. I'm going to click on execute and we got a response 201 uh, and with an ID as four because we got an ID as four because at the, at the startup we already created three new to do items. So this is another to do item we created um, into our database. So let's go to uh, the next endpoint that is the get all to do items endpoint and I'm going to again click on try it out and uh, here we are asked about query parameters if uh, a given to do is completed or not. So I'm going to get the to do's which are not yet completed. I'm going to click on execute. So you see that we got a response to to do's that are not yet completed. That is good. So now let's try the next endpoint to get a to do item by ID. So I'm going to click on try it out and I'm going to get a to do item by ID four. So let's click on execute and you see that we got back the response uh, to do with the uh, ideas four. Finally, we can also try to delete some to do's. So I'm going to delete the to do with the uh, ID four. So let's click on execute and we got a 204 response. That means the request is successful and we also have a patch endpoint. So I'm going to toggle the completion status of the to do. Uh, so I'm going to click and try it out button one more time and I'm going to complete the to do item with ID one. So just click on execute and here you can see that we got a 200 response with completed status as true. So let's verify this one more time by calling the get to do item by ID uh, endpoint with an ID as one. And now you can see that the uh, to do with ID one is completed. It's set to completed as true. You can see that we are able to generate a fully functional application using uh, Juni, but there are some points to improve because mainly you can see that there are not always using the latest Spring Boot version and not lot always using the latest LT version of uh, of the Java version. And there are some usually coding guidelines that I would like to enforce that I would like to enforce and ask Juni to uh, follow while creating the code. So you can do that by creating a guidelines 
a file inside our root project i can create a new folder new directory called as dot juni you see a warning but you can ignore this so inside the juni dot juni folder i can create a file called as guidelines dot md so i'm going to add this to git and i already prepared a set of guidelines that i want to use to generate uh, projects using Juni. I will leave this link in the description section. You can also grab this uh, guidelines and you can also apply it to your projects. So it's uh, the, gu the guidelines are nothing but a set of instructions that I want Juni to follow uh, so that it can uh, generate the application according to my preferences. For the technologies and versions I want to use always the latest Java uh, LTS version and also the latest Spring Boot major release and I don't want to use any snapshot versions of the Spring Boot release Spring Boot. I want to use Maven as a build tool and I want to follow a particular project structure. I don't like to use a package by, I don't like to package by layer, but I would like to package by future approach. For example, if I'm developing a e-commerce project, I would like to package, uh, group the necessary code according to the domain objects in my, according to the domain objects in my application. So for example, for an e-commerce application, all the product related classes are, uh, are uh, staying inside the product package all the cart related products are staying inside the cart package. So this is the package structure I prefer. You can go through this documentation and you can also add your own guidelines according to your own preferences. So I'm just going to uh, click on the raw version of this and I'm just going to copy this particular file and go back to the IDE. And under the guidelines.md file, I'm just going to paste this particular text. So now I'm going to open Juni one more time and here I'm going to provide it a task to update this project according to the guidelines defined under the .juni folder. So I'm just going to type in refactor the project according to the guidelines provided under the .juni guidelines.md file. So I just uh, submitted this request. So Juni is going to do its thing. I think it will take some time. I will come back to you once the refactoring process is completed. All right, so Juni is now done with the task uh, and it refactored the whole application according to the guidelines. So the if you can, can just quickly go through the changes it, uh, it made. So it did the initial analysis of the project structure, created the new target packages to use the package by future approach, created the appropriate sub packages and uh, it replaced the field injection with the constructor injection, add proper transactional annotation to service method, create DTOs for request and response object. It also uh, set up flyway for database migration, which is nice because uh, previously it was just relying on the configuration classes. And uh, it also updated the pom.xml file to add the flyway dependencies and the test container dependencies. If I just go to the source main Java folder, you can just see two packages here. The first one is to do where it contains all the necessary items of the to do um, package inside. So we have the to do controller, the to do item. So if I open, so if you can observe that uh, whenever we are using a Spring Data JPA entity, it is not using the data annotation, but it is using the getter and setter annotation explicitly. And I also ask uh, Juni to use a separate mapper. So it created a mapper class and uh, added all the mapping methods into this class, which is nice. And I also asked Juni to specifically use the uh, JPQL queries instead of relying on the Spring Data JPA methods. And uh, it also implemented this according to my preferences, which is nice. And there is also no repository annotation on top of the interface. If I go to the to-do service, it added the transactional annotation on top of uh, corresponding methods. So whenever there is a change of database state, we are adding a transactional annotation. And whenever we are doing a read query, read from the database, we are adding a transactional annotation with read only attribute as true. So you can see that uh, Juni has made a pretty good job to develop the application according to my preferences and according to my guidelines I have set. So in this way you can set different kinds of guidelines and you can go as detailed as possible according to your code review guidelines and then you can be as specific as possible. So in this way I think Juni can help us a lot in our day-to-day -day coding activities. So don't see uh, Juni as something which will replace you as a developer but it will support you as a developer to complete your work quickly and increase your productivity. So that's it for this video. I hope you like this video. I will see you in the next video.